I don't know when it's going to hit. Like, that's the problem. Like, I don't know who I'm going to get every day when I wake up. And even so, like, I could wake up in the morning and the sky is just falling for no reason. And a lot of it, and, and I talk about the motivation. I don't feel worthy of being loved. And I don't, I don't know what it's like to love myself from the inside out. Like, I don't know what that's like. And I'm working on it, man. I'm, I'm like, I'm working. All right, welcome back to the program, everybody. I feel like today could be one of the more important shows we've ever done, uh, just because of the time in our culture and the courageous nature of my guest. He's an interesting guy. I met Jay a long time ago. I actually met him in a gym in the Bahamas, and we've got a bunch of really good mutual friends. And I wanted to have Jay on the show back then because of who he is. He's in the NFL insider on Fox Sports and uh, on Fox NFL Sunday. He's probably got one of the top five or 10 Rolodexes on the planet between, you know, athletes, entertainers, you name it. He's one of the most connected people on the planet. He's got foundation work. He does charity work with a thing he founded called MVP, which is merging vets and players. He's got unbreakable performance, which is his training facility. He's just a super, really interesting, connected guy. But then lately, he's been talking more about what we're going to talk about today, mainly, which is mental health and sort of his um, his battle with mental health and his... Uh, is trying to conquer it. So, Jay Glazer, thank you for being here today, brother. Absolutely, brother. Thank you for uh, having me, man. You're right. You know, I got to work out. And uh, I mean, how funny is that? How the, the, the universe conspires to help us. We're in a gym in the Bahamas, and there you are. And I know you're trying to get me on the show there. Yeah. Through, you know, unbreakable what I've done, and uh, it was just, yeah, there was just that was a that was a wild one. Actually, I was down there with with uh, an ex girlfriend now, but my son and a little kid named Logan. Okay. And Logan, I introduced you, right? Yeah. I don't, do you remember? I, I don't know if I told you a story or not. You didn't. You just introduced me, but you didn't tell me that. So Logan, Nobriga is his name. Logan got leukemia when he was, I think, three until he was six. Wow. And then beat it. And then it came back when he was six and a half. And wow. wow. then I, I used to have another foundation called Touchdown Dreams. That's how I met him. Um, but he became like my dude. I was like, I'm going to walk this walk with this kid until it's you know, forever, however, however long that is. Well, he ends up beating leukemia again for the second time. Thank he God. kind of became the welcoming uh, party at UCLA Children's Hospital. Wow. And wow. what happened was, um, it was funny, the day he got his port taken out, it just goes to show you, like, people want to do good things. Yes. He shows up to UCLA with a Rob Gronkowski jersey. <laughs> and I called Gronk. I'm like, hey, dude, are you in L.A.? Like, you got to come over here right now to the gym. Oh. Unbreakable. Because I got then I tell him the story, and he's like, I'll be right over. Like, just incredible. And awesome. I called Logan. I was like, hey, Logan, where are you? I haven't seen your report card. I kind of started jumping all over. Where right. are you? I've, and Logan and his mom, Kirsten, is like, well, you better get up there. So he gets up to the gym and he walks in and he sees Gronk and he goes, <gasps> and he goes, oh. wait, so am I in trouble? We're like, no, no, no. <laughs> but that trip to the Bahamas, I think, was the first trip he was able to take mm. after getting his port taken out. Wow. So wow. I took him there for that. But also the crazier part, and this is like in the book, I, I talk a lot about this, but you, like you just never know what lies we're at next Tuesday. And I brought him into an MVP session, which is, you know, we had about 90 combat vets and former pro athletes together, all on the map talking mental health. And I said, Logan, now the way MVP came about was Logan's grandmother, who is a, her name's Susie, who was a, she was a, a, a uh, therapist for a lot of, a lot of these veterans. So it was kind of their idea. No way. And yeah, to, to like, Hey, let's put your football player friends who are struggling mm. together with these vets. Let's see if it works. And it was their idea. And here mm -hmm. we are with 90 combat vets, many of who attempted suicide before meeting us. And now are just doing great and, and living their best lives. And I said, Logan, I know it sucks that you had leukemia. I totally know, like, I get it. But if you didn't, we wouldn't have started this charity. Wow. And I said, what? if we didn't start this charity, show of hands right now, how many people wouldn't be here right now? Oh, my gosh. And a lot of hands go up in the room. Did they really? And then somebody else said, let's take a step further. If we didn't have MVP, how many of us wouldn't be where we are right now in life? Mm. And 90 of the 90 hands go up. And then they started saying, Logan, my name is Denver Morris, who's worked for me now, but he said, I had, uh, I, he's lost 51 of his teammates to suicide. 
Um, he lost a lot in Iraq and Afghanistan, and you know, called the five two. And he said, "I myself have attempted suicide three wow. times. So MVP saved my life. So Logan, thank you for saving my life." Oh my gosh, brother, yeah, that's I'm, incredible! I'm sorry, I'm coming out of the gates hot with you here, man. But no, it's so good. That's, I mean, so that little kid that you met, that was his first trip after, and then the whole room started going around. Logan, I'm such and such. Man, thank you for saving my life. And he turns and he looks at me, and goes, "I didn't realize that I did all this." I said. Oh. Hey, you never know. Like your fight to come through the fact that leukemia didn't break you is now saving thousands and thousands of lives. And it does help you at it. But Logan, thank you for saving all of us. Bro, so that's bananas. Up. And I it, can't it, believe it, that it, I met that little guy with you. And yeah. what you said about breaking, so I got I guess gotta share this everybody. We've done shows on mental health before, but i you know, an expert here or there. Never had someone on who's a well-known, very well-known person who's dealing with it currently in real time. This is why what you're doing right now, bro, even what you've done with Logan and what you've done with MVP and you just make a difference in the world. But I think maybe, you know, one of the, you know, if he had not had leukemia, the foundation doesn't start. You don't save those guys. I just feel like maybe your mental health struggle, had you not had that, there may be millions of other people, including today, whose lives, yeah. you know, may end or be really negatively impacted by not getting some help. So if you guys don't know this, follow Jay on Instagram or Twitter, wherever on any socials, but he's sort of right now, like live saying, Hey, here's my mental health checkup today. I'm doing good. I'm not doing good. And he wrote this book that if you have mental health issues, or you know, anybody who does, which is every single one of us, by the way, especially today, especially today, it's called unbreakable, how I turn my depression and anxiety into motivation and you can too. And there's the cover he's showing for the YouTube folks right now. It takes a lot of courage to do what you're doing, brother. And so I want to kind of get into it if we could, because you know, I feel like I have a little of the gray. I think there's extremes of everything in life, right? There's degrees, there's spectrums, but you describe like living in the gray. What is the gray? I don't know life outside of it. That That is the crappy part for me. Like, listen, mm -hmm. people look at me, oh, oh my God, your life is so great. And damn right it is. My life is great, mm -hmm. but not between my ears. My life sucks between my ears. And I keep saying like, my, my wallet's not an antidepressant. Mm. I, can I pay my bills better now? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it does not, it's not rainbows and unicorns when you have the mental health or mental illnesses that I have. I have, uh, my gray is depression and anxiety and it's from my earliest childhood memories. I don't know any other way. And mm. what the book is, you know, the books is titled Unbreakable, How I Turn My Depression and Anxiety into Motivation. And you can too. I don't allow it to keep me in bed. It, it is crippling. My level of gray is crippling it, every day. Like it sucks having this. It's painful. It sucks. And, you know, I was telling Strahan the other day, I said, you know, y'all have known about my, you know, my crazy for a long time, but you just yeah. didn't know how much pain I was in all this, these years, you know, and that's why I lashed out a lot. And that's why I had, I'm not perfect. I'm flawed. I'm an effed up human being. Mm -hmm. um, so am I. And, and but I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm f***ed up, but I'm good with my got this uh, <laughs> but you when it hits you this is what struck me and by the I way it's an unbelievable book what's that I don't, I don't know when it's gonna hit like that's the problem like i don't know who i'm gonna get every day when i wake up and even so like i could wake up in the morning and the sky is just falling for no reason and a lot of it and, and i talk about the motivation i don't feel worthy of being loved mm -hmm. and i don't i don't know what it's like to love myself from the inside out mm -hmm. like i don't know what that's like and i'm working on it man i'm, mm -hmm. I'm like I'm working. So as a result, I've had to work so hard to do all these great things to get love from the outside in. Yes. And that's the motivation part. Like if I didn't, like, I don't use anything as a crutch and like, like I've been hitting the head a lot. Right. So I've trained all these MMA fighters and football players for years. And, and I've had a couple of fights myself and I, I'm not a good fighter, but I, you know, I've done it. Yep. And when you're a crappy fighter like me, you get hit an awful lot more. <laughs> And I've had a lot of back injuries, a lot of surgeries because of Randy Couture and Chuck Liddell because they're full training partners. <laughs> and um, But when I walk in a room, instead of like, oh, man, this sucks. my back, Like, I'm missing my L4, L5 because it's ruptured four times. And I don't walk in a room going, this sucks. Or, man, I, I'm forgetting these people's names, so this sucks. And I'm mm. going to use it as a crutch. I walk in a room like, you know what? I got this back pain or I'm having these memory issues because I did something 99.99999% of the world are unwilling or unable to do. That's right. And it didn't break me, yeah, right? So right. I, it makes me feel different. And different is good. And different leads to success. So 
Jay, when it hits you, I read, by the way, I read the whole book in a day and a half. Like I just, it's, it grabbed me because I think it always in my family, there's been a little bit of the gray. They tend to the gray. I think there's extremes of it, right? But I just feel like almost genetically in my family, maybe there's a little of that. Maybe most people can relate to that a little bit. But what struck me about when you said it doesn't just affect you, you know, in your mind or your emotions, you actually can feel it sometimes physically, all right? Elaborate on that. So when I have, when I have a, a full blown attack mm -hmm. and it's a lot more than people realize. Mm. Like I just had one, I had, a, I had one last week. Okay. I couldn't get out of bed until four o'clock. One of my training partners, Mark Kerr, like literally had to come over and I asked him, so I will reach out for help. I, I used to not, I used to just have mm. blow ups or incidents where I would just sit in my bed, right? And now I will ask for help. And I'll call my boy, I'll say, hey man, I need you to come over today. I've now shared with a lot of my close, very doodly type friends, like right? guys in the NFL, man, it's, it's brought us so much closer together. Mm. Like, they want to be on this journey, but you're talking about the physical part. I feel it in my heart. I feel it on the left side of my gut. Mm. So we hear about gut punches or man, go with your gut. Or you have a feeling in your gut. Mm. My gut feels just, man, like there's, it's hurts and like there's spider rubs in there and chains. And, and then I feel like I'm in a 50 round fight. Like, mm. I just had to cancel dinner with Strahan because I was like, dude, I just can't go. Dude, I'm just exhausted. I literally felt like I got through a 50 round fight. Mm. And again, I, I try to make it very, very limited of where it knocks me on my butt. Like mm -hmm. I am relentless in everything I do. Like I, I have to be relentless to go after my dreams so I can get that outside love. Mm. So once I make the decision to get out of bed, I go for it. Like I am, I will outwork the world. I am relent. I will train that way and fight that way and live less, live life that way. But getting out of bed, man, when you have these heavy chains pulling you through, down through the darkness, it's a, it's literally, it's hard every, it's hard for me to get out of bed in the morning. But man, those 15 minutes that I lay my head on my pillow every night, mm. I want to get emotional here. Mm. Um, Cause sometimes I do, cause I actually kind of look at me and, like feel bad for that person and want to give them a hug. Yeah. Um, but when you lay your head on your pillow at night and you're by yourself, those 15 minutes and you're, and you're with someone that you don't know how to love or like, or feel worthy of being liked or loved. Think of that. Like, mm -hmm. man, that's, that's hard. dude. It's a hard thing. And yeah. I, I'm hoping by this book, like I know for me having teammates again, really, really lifts me up. I see I'm, <laughs> thank um, you brother i appreciate yeah. this very much man hey no one's questioning my manhood i'll cry on the drop of time right, <laughs> right, right. Uh, um i'm hoping by this book i can get a lot more teammates that i could lift up because I, I could be of service to people but then they in turn could lift me up because I, I just like i don't deserve to to lay at night every night and you don't and look at that person and go man it's, such a terrible person, such a horrible person. Like everybody says, you got to see all this great stuff you're doing for people. And, and I'm not able to, to see it because the roommates on my head tell me a much different story about myself. Yeah. But I've been, I've had a couple incidents here and there lately now that I started to do these videos where I have felt it and I'm 52. And now just for the first time in my life going, Hey, maybe, maybe like, maybe there's a yeah, chance. Yeah, brother. I got to tell you, um, I'm emotional listening to you just because I can't get over the courage it takes to be you and share this. And, mm -hmm. you know, I just want to acknowledge you for that, bro. Like, I just, it's really interesting. I, I admired a lot of things about you that were really surface based from a distance. Cause we got a ton of mutual friends. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm beginning to admire you for real stuff. And maybe that's where you're going with you. Yeah. That yeah. instead of just being the surface things of who you know or what you've done or how hard you can kick or punch, that maybe you're getting there like, hey man, I'm a good man. I deserve to be happy. Cause I think millions of people listen to this are like, I relate to that to some level that I don't deserve to be loved or I don't even love myself. Or, you know, if they knew all this stuff I've done or I think or I've, then they really wouldn't love me. You know, there's all these guilt we carry and shame about oh, yeah. stuff. Some of it's nonsense. But the other thing you do, man. Is like, he doesn't just say, hey, man, I'm hurting. He tells you, when it's working, here's some of the things I do that works. And you just said that about your buddy coming over and getting you out of bed. Talk about these three things real quick. You said, I need a team, number one. I need to be in service to others, number two. And I need to laugh, number three. 
Yeah. Right. And so these are like, these are pathways out of getting out of bed. These are pathways to that day winning the battle, even though you're not going to win it every day. All of us that struggle with any mental health, there are just days we lose. I yep. think I say this, Jay, about my son. I'm a golfer. I suck. Strayhand just played at my club, by the way, Saturday. Maybe that was the night you're going to have dinner with him. Oh, that was and, place? Yeah, at Madison. He played at yeah. the Madison. Yeah. 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 And at Melbourne's place. Yeah. But my son is a better golfer than me. Not because he never hits good shot, bad shots. It's his dispersion. In other words, my bad shot can go 100 yards left or 300 yards right. My sons are 20 yards. It's yeah. dispersion. So if you have mental health issues, sometimes it's not, you're never going to have a bad day. Yeah. It's the dispersion. How bad is the day or how many of them are there? And if you can shrink the dispersion of the distance between them, you win. And so you have those three like, things. Need a team, need to be a service of others, need to laugh. Talk about that. Yeah, like, you know, that's my, and it's, this is a prescriptive book, right? So yeah. I have a couple different, I have a couple chapters on, you know, on how to, have a team, have a team, but like there's different ways to have a team and um, how to be of service. Even when I like, listen, the first, you'll read it. The first 10 years of my career, I was making 9,700 bucks a year, living in New York city. Crazy. and didn't have enough money to go back and forth from, to take a subway to a bus from New York city to giant stadium. And then back to so Strahan drove me back in the city every single day yeah. for like eight years, which means I own like 26 grand in Lincoln tunnel fare. Um, <laughs> But you know, I worked my ass off doing this. But even when I was broke, I knew the things that needed that I needed for my own mental health. And we didn't talk about mental health back then. Mm -hmm. But back then, I'm like, I have to be of service. So I figured out ways to be of service, which didn't cost really any money or not much money at all. Where I was able to use my time or just be creative with some people who needed it. So mm -hmm. that's in the book. And then the laughter part, oh, dude, like I have a whole practical joke chapter because yeah, being... Uh, there's a price to be paid to, for being Jay Glazer's friend because the gray hates laughter. So I'm constantly trying to laugh. And like you said, a lot of the surface, surface stuff, I'm a big personality on TV and out in public, but it's to hide my pain. Like it's, it's part of it is the, um, mm. is that's what I, yeah, I, I like being on tell I feel safe on TV. Mm. I feel safe in a cage. I don't feel safe in the rest of the world. Um, but that's that um, big person. But a lot of it too is to just overcompensate for how worthless I always feel. Gosh. Yeah. So for the laughter part, it, whenever I'm struggling, I struggle a lot on TV and people don't know. And you'll, you'll really find out in the book yeah. just how much uh, I have anxiety and panic attacks um, going into damn near every show. So if you see me on Fox early, like cracking a joke, I'm actually doing it because it gets me, it, it gets my, I call it, like I wrestle with my abuser, gets those anxiety attacks away. Like it hates laughter. So until I could laugh, a lot of times I am like out of my mind. So there's different things of laughter, but but the team also like, look, my team, I have teams in so many different areas and, and like God is a team for me and my fight team is a team for me and my football family is a team for me. My Fox and my someday family is a team for me. My little rescue pit I adopted is a team for me. Like we need teams. Because what's the biggest thing here? I just said, like, those of us with any sort of mental health stuff, we tend to isolate. Yeah. If you isolate, man, that's scary. That's when the roommates in your head start talking really bad to each other. Mm. Right? So when you got a team, the roommates in our head will talk a little bit nicer to each other. Is part of talking about it, Jay, like, just your awareness that these roommates are talking? Do they lose a little of their power over you just when you're aware? Like, hey, here I go again. Like, like. I think for years, some people live in patterns. They don't even know it's happening. Oh, I know what happens. You do. Do you, do you think the awareness, two things. One, does the awareness of it minimize it at all? And two, you're a real physical dude. Mm -hmm. How important is the physical moving your body? I doubt, maybe I'm wrong. Have you ever been in the midst of like massive physical activity and still felt these things? Or is that also a pathway out for you when you're getting real physical, you're really moving your body? Huge pathway. I mean, okay. Troy Oakman just posted like, man, if you could... Uh, if we could take working out and put it in a pill, it'd be the best antidepressant of all time. Right. And yeah. it's true. Like you've got it. And like for me, I asked when I was struggling the last week, I asked Mark Kerr, who was the first ever UFC champion of the world. <clears throat> I need you to come over and we need to spar. Basically like, I'm like, give me more CT. I need you to punch me in my head. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, but yeah, like I will force myself to, I will say this when I'm, when I start some of these workouts, I'm going to really, and I'm in a really bad place. Mm. I, man, it's, it's, it's hard. And I can feel it again, the physical part, 
it causes inflammation. So I'm inflamed and my joints hurt. But as I start getting through that workout, and then as I know I accomplish something. So if you're going to do the workout, just get through it. Don't cut it short. Mm-hmm. Get through because at the end, you just feel better because, okay, I did. I, I, I was able to, to fight through my own darkness and get through something today. That's able to push my breaking point a little bit. That's able to fight back against the gray stuff. And mm-hmm. you said it before, by the way. It's the gray nowadays. It's not just if I have, if, if you have depression, anxiety, like I do. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's all of us. I just spoke to a room of 75 clinicians. Mm-hmm. And I said, listen, schooling is your expertise. Suffering is my expertise. Said so the difference is you all went to school before the cell phone came out and before Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And man, like it's just such a hard life these days when we're comparing ourselves. I'm, look, yep. I'm on the number one TV show, sports show in the history of America. And I still feel freaking left out. Like mm-hmm. I look at somebody else's Instagram, I'm like, damn, my life sucks. How come I'm not doing it? And it's fake. We're comparing so, ourselves to somebody else's filter. So, fraction of a second of one minute of one hour of one day. And we all think our lives suck. Mm. And then you look on Twitter and the way people talk to each other. And I was just explaining this to, to John Gordon, your guy, John Gordon, the other day. Yeah. Uh, I said, think about this. We're kids growing up and man, you got bullied on the playground. I'm from Jersey Shore. So there's a lot of that yeah. going on. Yeah. Um, it sucked for you for the weekend, right? It was bad. Yeah. Or if it happened to your friend, it sucked, right? It, it lasted for a few days. But we now have that same feeling and see that a thousand times a second. So true. You see somebody getting bullied or talked to, and even if it's not about you, it hurts the human condition yeah. and it changes us here. So, you know, I asked them all, I said, I need you to kind of almost go back to school and figure out how is the brain morphed with all this, with all the, the negative stuff that we see yep. and how, how left out we're all feeling. So true. Even I have that, man. I'll, I'm checking social media sometimes. I'm like, crap, I thought I had a pretty good gig going here. I'm not doing that. They're having a black, they're way happier than me. And there's like this fake threshold of happiness that, cause everyone's taking 80 pictures before they post the one or a hundred videos. And, and then filtering it. It ain't I, real. It's so funny. I was at dinner the other night and this family was literally arguing like loud arguing in the restaurant. I'm talking like F bombs back and forth with the husband and the wife in front of the kids. Was it my family? No, <laughs> that sounds like mine too. And uh, my family, I came from not my current one, but anyway, they're yelling at each other. And then the guy, the server comes up and the dad goes, we take a picture of our family. And it was like hugs and oh smiles. And when you see that post, you're like, this is a loving, wow. What a great dinner. They were literally ready to kill each other 20 seconds before. So Man. you're totally right. Your, your today's social man hit me and you're hitting me right now. Like I think vulnerability is one of the most masculine things you can do. Jay's in the most masculine, he's in football, he's in the MMA world. He's with vets. Like there's a lot of masculinity around this dude. And, and so that's why it takes to me extra courage. But I think oftentimes our secrets, our vulnerability is our pathway to serving, which you said earlier is the pathway to serving other people to show our weaknesses, not our strengths. And to say, hey, man, I'm just like you. Or maybe there's even things about me that you couldn't even imagine to be true. I almost feel like you found your stride. So you said in the book, I'm going to quote it because I wrote it down. Sometimes our darkest moments become the seed of something beautiful. Mm-hmm. And you've now gone to social recently going, hey, guys, I'm in the gray today mm-hmm. and posting it. So talk to just share with them what the heck happened to you yesterday from you sharing this. This is a public figure on television you know, getting information from people all the time, and he's too old to do this. So go ahead. I know you're going to cry again, but go ahead. Oh my God! Yeah, and look again. Vulnerability is true strength. Doesn't matter how big our muscles are; it means nothing. It's fake, right? The vulnerability is what. That's what moves mountains and moves mm-hmm. walls and breaks chains and breaks bonds off us. Wow. And or, and builds bonds, I should say, breaks those chains off us. So, yeah, I started because um, when the book came out. Obviously, everybody knows me from football or fighting the ballers and, and, and stuff. And they're like, well, we want people to, you know, really kind of understand, like, this isn't a sports book. This is, you know, there's a lot of sports analogies because the book's, book's filled with my sports world to get there. But, you know, and the time we had this meeting, we had like another month until the book came out. I said, hey, listen, I really want to start helping people now, mm. like right now, like now that I could see it because everybody read it. They're like, oh, my God, you're going to change the world. And yep. this is great. And. I said, why don't I help, I'm start helping people now? And I said, I'm, you know what? F- it. I'm going to start posting in real time to mm-hmm. show people what it's really like so they know they're not alone. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that first one, 
man, I got, when I told people this, what's going to happen, I'm going to take a journey with you yeah. and show you what it's really like, like mm -hmm. and the goods and the bad. And, and I want us all like have a team. So I say, you know, post down there, if you're struggling and I want y'all to read my comments and lift that person up. Yeah. And man, that first post did, you know, 700,000 views and wow. hundreds of messages where people were sharing and lifting each other. And that's what it's mm -hmm. supposed to be. You see me in makeup on TV. You see me dressed up. That's what we all see. We don't ever see like what it's really like. This is what people wake up to. This crap is what we wake up to. So yeah, I want to be that, that voice. I want to walk this walk for everybody to be there. And you know, The Rock did my forward. And yeah. he's like, you're going to be the voice for the gray, for all of us in wow. the gray. And that's where, that's why I did it when it was so powerful. So I've continued to post these, the good stop times, the bad times, all of it. And it really has been, um, it's been, yeah, it's been just remarkable. And I have not felt as alone because everybody else has now chimed in. Like it, like when you have these mental health issues, you feel isolated. Again, I, it, it's my own roommate saying the wrong things to me in, in my head. So yesterday, yes, I leave Unbreakable, my gym up in on Sunset Strip that I, that I have, and I'm going back to my hotel and I'm driving down Sunset Strip and I'm back of a of a car service and I'm in the back of an Uber and I pull up to a light right on Sunset in San Vicente. And there's a woman who's in the next truck over and she kind of looks at me and does a double take. Mm -hmm. And I do that. And she said, thank you so much. Awesome. Well, here, God, I was, I'm about to start crying. I said, <laughs> she goes, thank you so much for what you've been posting on mental health. I said, oh, absolutely. She said, no, I'm in my car driving right now because I was having one of those days in the gray and I listened to your post and I got out and I'm taking a drive. Basically, so she doesn't isolate. I was like, what? She goes, I can't believe that you just pulled up next to me. Crazy. Is that unbelievable? That's crazy. So, yep. Oh, my God. And um, That's God, man. I think that's God. Oh, that's God. you planting the seeds, and that's the yes. harvest from God. That's what I believe. I couldn't believe. I said, oh, my. She said, thank you. i like, I can't believe you're, but you're the reason that I'm driving around right now. To clear, to clear my head out of the isolation. And I posted it today, and um, she... Posted and said, that was me. That was me. And she actually, oh. crazy enough, she works in sports too. No way, man. And so it's no online. Way. Go go look. I was just like, oh my God. And now she just like DM me. I said, well, now you're stuck with me. So we're good. But it's, I don't think, and I think, Jay, I want to say something to everybody about this. Not to interrupt you, just because it's so powerful. I don't think you have to be Jay Glazer to do this. What if we started, what if we started to look at social media differently? What if a lot of us started to post, hey, I'm in the gray today. Here's what I'm struggling with today. For some of you, if you really want to build a following, you had an ulterior motive, which is okay. People would rather have you document your journey than just post filtered pictures of yourself. So even if you wanted to do something where you wanted to build a following, I can promise you, you start to share your struggles mm -hmm. and your vulnerabilities, no matter who you are. You're a, you're a, you're a, uh, right now raising a couple of babies at home and you're a mother and you start showing the, the, mm -hmm. the, the struggle in the morning to get them off to school and to get things ready and get to your job and how all that affects you. And maybe some days you're not feeling fulfilled or appreciated. I'm telling you, you would help more people that way than showing this great steak dinner you had with a bottle of wine with everyone that everyone else is posting. Don't you agree? I'm not, so I have a friend named John Mullen, who was one of my mentors when I started becoming a sports uh, reporter for the New York Post which I totally like scam my way into back then because I don't know writing where it's, it's all in the book for my nine grand a year. But John covered the Bears for years and years. And John right now is fighting a bad cancer battle. Mm. And I said to him, hey, dude, what you got to do here? Like for me, again, how can we be of service? Like I told him it really helps me to be of service. I said, John, he, and he's going through like pancreatic and stomach cancer. And, and I said, this, I said, have you found anywhere online to like to look to see like what you're about to, you know, embark on he's like no i said why don't you be that guy i said why don't you start journaling and why don't you start doing videos so other people who are about to battle this kind of cancer now at least have your videos they know what they're getting themselves into and they can walk this walk with you mm -hmm. and he started doing that it's awesome and that that's what exactly a million percent and he started putting it on youtube and now if someone has it they can google him or look it up and it'll it'll come up and he's still he's still fighting it still battling god and bless him God bless him. He's he is the best, but he's going to help a lot of people. And that's the same thing. Like if you're right, like how many more pictures could we see of people freaking it's posing at the, at the beach with some 
what sunset or whatever, you know, it's or, true. or that, <laughs> or a dinner party where they actually hate each other. And, right. and then, by the way, even if you had no, even if your motive was to grow your social, I can just tell you guys all this, no one's going to share a post of you eating a steak with a bottle of wine, but you start saying, this is what I'm struggling with my weight or my relationship or my emotions or my mental health. You might be surprised how much people start to share your stuff because everyday people, that's what social media really should be for is people helping one another on social. So I just, I, the fact that it's you, it takes, I think, an, I think anyone to do it takes an extreme amount of courage, but when you're at the top and people look at you, I think there's another layer of courage that you're embodying right now that I just, I love, and you're doing it again today on the show. So I just want to acknowledge that. Now there's another side to Jay, by the way, which is not just the mental health side. There's a man who struggled for decades to build a career. There's not a lot of spots for what Jay does on the planet. There's like a couple, right? So this is a dude who's worked his way to the top of his profession. He's humble, but it's just a fact. And, you know, not everybody can go, hey, Dwayne Johnson, write the foreword of my book, right? Or, hey, you know, Strahan, I got to cancel dinner on you, right? And to be on television every single week. And so he's worked his way to be an achiever at the highest of all high levels. And you have this thing in the book, you know, if you can cover some of it, I'd appreciate it. the unbreakable mindset. There's like five things you share in the book and I'm reading it. I'm like, yep, that's true. Yep. That's true. Yep. I did that. So would you share a couple of those points at least, well, maybe not all of them so they can go get the book, but what are a few of the unbreakable mindset points? Well, there's two, there's unbreakable mindset for how we train guys and the unbreakable mindset in life. But yeah, like for my life, again, I made 9,700 bucks a year for the first 10 years. So I just walk in that New York giant locker room in 1993. I'm like, I'll be the last dude standing here. Mm. I, if, if I will outwork the world, not by a little, but by a lot. So if they're working nine to five, I'm going to come in at six or 7 a.m. and leave until whenever Strahan drives my back to the city, which is usually seven at night. So I'm putting in 12 hours, not eight hours. Right. Mm. And man, how could I be different? Mm. Like go in there, you know, got to be authentic and you got to be different. Like different is good. Different leads to success. I tell our vets this all the time. Like, Hey, don't just be a face in the crowd. Be the damn crowd. Mm. Right? Stand out. Be the crowd. That's the, the the part of success. But you know, getting there, people see me now, right? Yep. Yes, I'm the our sports show. Our show is the only sports show ever in the TV Hall of Fame. Yeah, and that's pretty. What cool. we didn't see is the is the ten years of me saying, "All right, I'm going to get rejected more than any human being on the planet." <laughs> and you know, I talked about a team like God being one of my team, yep. part of my team. And it's like, look, I'm a big. God, guys, it's my, it's my choice to have faith. You, yeah. you don't, that's on you, but it doesn't really hurt you that I have faith. That's great point. my choice, right? Great point. And I would literally say to God every week, listen, I'm going to go after it. I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm willing to get rejected over and over and over and over. All I'm asking for you, God, is that when I do get knocked down, you pick me up, you brush me off, and let's keep walking this walk together. Wow. And I got it. So, man, listen, though, 10, 11 years of being rejected, mm. That's, you know, and me saying, I'm, when I said I'll be the last dude standing there, I meant it. That's horrible. That's swimming upstream for a long time. That is exhausting. And then when I finally got there, I became the first minute by minute breaking news guy in America, me and a guy named Len Pasquarelli, mm -hmm. when that internet thing came out, which I think is going to catch up. And, uh, <laughs> and it, that, then that was exhausting. Like, there was no crawl on the bottom of the screen before, like, Everything was newspapers. Mm -hmm. So we we're the first one to use the internet to break news by the second. Mm -hmm. And then Chris Mortensen jumped in on that and John Clayton. Um, John and then Clayton. it became a bigger thing. Mm -hmm. But this is 99. Mm -hmm. I was breaking news on the internet mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then made it what it is now, which is everything is minute by minute breaking news. But that was exhausting because it's me versus ESPN. And then I'm like, okay, I got to now show the world that I'm breaking this and this to try and continue to move up the ladder. So Listen, being successful, it's exhausting. There's no get rich quick scheme. There's no overnight success that's completely full of crap. Yeah. It's you outworking the world, yeah. not by a little, by a lot. And being my other thing is loyalty. And my dad taught me, you outwork the world and you're loyal. Yes. Your dreams will come true. So over time, we talk about these teams because of my loyalty. Mm. I've been able to have a lot of these relationships, you know, I can't do it myself. I need the relationships. Yep. But the loyal loyalty is a, lo a lost art. It's one of the chapters, everybody. I think yep. it's the second chapter. Yep. Everybody wants something from somebody. Yeah. Okay. Here's the difference. I just look at it and go, man, how can I help out this person, this person, this person? And I'm hoping 10% of them, 
do the same back for me. Yep. And if I can do that, then I got a pretty good little mafia. Yep. That's the true called law of reciprocity, everybody. It's really weird because you wrote the book and I'm like, most people wouldn't talk about that. For me, like one of the most valued traits, I don't know if it's the way I was raised or what, but like loyalty is a massive thing to me. And when you go through real crap times, you figure out really, that is a, you called it a lost art form. It is a really lost art form in today's world, right? People run from you. I'll never forget, man. I was playing flag football when I was in the eighth grade. This guy's name was Tom McManus. He got tackled, right? And uh, he separated his elbow. And it was horrible looking. And right when it happened, it was gory. He was screaming. And I remember watching everyone just naturally ran away from him as kids, like ran away. And I remember me and one other dude, I stood there and I looked at him and I moved towards him. Yes. I remember this is in the eighth grade because he was it's excruciating pain. Everyone physically ran from him. And I remember like, as I was over there kind of comforting the guy and they called an ambulance, I remember thinking, I kind of want to be this guy. I'm in eighth grade. I want to that's be cool. that guy all my life. I'm going to run towards the dude who's hurting, not that's run away from him. And that's a decision you made. That's very cool. That's the thing also. It's it's our choices, right? What do we decide? Yeah. You decide to be that guy. I'm mm-hmm. going to go to it. And you know what? I always say there's only a few times in life you find out who you really are. Mm-hmm. And you found out that day who you really were. Yeah. I'd like to think so. It's pretty cool. What's this deal with next Tuesday? I just feel like it was so good in the book that you could share this with everybody. Like guys, I think this might be like, I want you to really, if you're driving, really listen right now. Cause I think this is profound. That's what I said to the girl when she pulled up next to me. You did. You never know what lies around next Tuesday. As in like with, with Logan, like, man, Logan, it sucked. You had leukemia, but you fought it and beat it. And now because of that, you have helped start a foundation where thousands of veterans have not committed suicide or have gotten jobs or we have a we have, we have hired a bunch of uh, a bunch of our, our hires at MVP were homeless when we met them now of jobs and homes and man so Logan it sucked you went through that but again like if you didn't they wouldn't be where they are and these are kids and husbands and wives and daughters and sons mm-hmm. and soon to be fathers and mothers. And, you know, um, and I said that to this girl yesterday, like, Hey, you never know what lies around next Tuesday as in, man, you never know something that you're working for. Mm. All of a sudden it just pops next week, or you meet the love of your life next week, or you learn how to give yourself a break next week. Like, I guess it's my way of saying hope and it's faith. Bingo. Yes. Yeah. Right. So you just never know what lies around next Tuesday. If we're all, sitting there just in the present and feeling so crappy about ourselves, mm. it's hard to get ourselves out of it. But if you have hope that, hey, you know what? I don't know what lies around that corner. Yes. I had no idea, right? So I had those 10 years where I didn't get a job. Yep. I kept saying the same thing. Next week, next week will be that week. Yep. Next week will be that week. Yeah. And finally, when I got the full-time job, and it was funny, my agent, Maury Goss' friend, calls me. I'm on a little uh, driving range in Randall's Island. I was living in the city. And my agent called me again 10 years in. Of, of making $9,700 a year in New York. That sucks. Mm. And you and the book starts with how crappy my apartment was with Strahan yeah. trying yeah. to go to the bathroom and he couldn't, right? Because yes. Yes. it's too small. It's you awesome. couldn't shut the, bath, the bathroom door. Yeah. You had the refrigerator block it. True story. <laughs> um, my agent calls. He's like, hey, you can exhale. I said, what did he say? We finally got you a full-time job. I said, what? Mm. So we finally, again, this is 10 freaking years Crazy. in. Yeah. And I said, Oh my God, who? And he said, CBS. And I said, wow. I'll take it. And he said, don't you want to know how much for? I said, I don't give a f-. <laughs> right, right. Because it validated me for all those years. Like I was going to work my ass off until something happened that next Tuesday. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I when I walked in that guy locker room and said, I'm going to be different than everybody else in here. And I'm going to outwork them all. And you know, like whoever said quitting is not an option, it's the biggest moron on the planet. It's the easiest option in the world. That's it right. sits there all day long That's and trips right. that. That was my moment. It validated me. Yeah. And if anybody ever asks you whether it was worth it, it's a thousand times better than even you thought it could be once you finally get there. I I think, don't you? That, that moment is. That moment. And is. would I have done this for another 20 years until I got it? Yes. Yeah. Like success is not overnight. It just yeah. It's not, it's the consistency and it's that consistent loyalty and consistent yep. hard work. Yep. And, and, you know, there's a reason why people are successful because they're willing to, you know, they're, they're willing to put the hours in when no one's watching. Yep. When there no one's watching. And the other thing too, about quitting, that's really interesting is people think you have to make a decision to never quit. 
But actually what you have to do, my dad stopped drinking for like 35 years. And I used to say, Hey daddy, when he was little, are you never going to drink again? And my dad would say, I'm not drinking today. He did it one day at a time. So you're thinking about quitting. Just don't quit for today. If you can't get out of bed, just get out of bed today. Just get out of bed today because you never know what's coming next Tuesday. I just feel like that's one of the great analogies I've ever heard in my damn life. And it's buying yourself another day. You know, sometimes thinking I got to make this massive life thing come in. Listen, you have big lifetime goals and then execute today. Don't quit today. Stay in the hunt today. Take care of yourself today. Serve other people today, right? Stay engaged today. Stay loyal today. And when you start stacking up those days, and it may sound corny, but you start stacking up those days over eight or 10 or 12 years, there's going to be that day where you get that call. There's that moment. And then, you know, I, again, I said, I'm a, I'm a big faith in God guy. So I, I read kind of like my prayer books, just where, where they work for me. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I, I learned something in there. It said, appreciate the toil, toil of the climb. Mm-hmm. Appreciate the toil of the climb. So good. And so what I decided way back when was, okay, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is not becoming Jay Glazer at the NFL and Fox. Mm-hmm. Right? It's not becoming Jay Glazer at Ball Earth or you know, the, 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 all the other shows uh, that I do. The pot of the end, of, pot of gold, the end of the rainbow is the journey itself. Yeah. I never knew I was going to get there. Mm-hmm. So I literally started saying, man, this is cool. I get to go to a press conference. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm not making any money, it's pretty, pretty damn cool. Yeah. I'm a, and that's, and look, if, if the, you know, the, the pot of gold, the end of the rainbow was, was was the jobs that we got or big breaks or something like that Mm -hmm. you wouldn't have all these celebrities having all these issues you wouldn't have people killing themselves who were at the top so it's not that so i want people to appreciate the journey and not consider yourself a failure you're comparing yourself to what somebody else has done the journey is the beautiful part and you know what so true i probably was happier back then in the journey because i didn't have any i didn't have the pressure of losing what i have now that's true. Well, then it was hard if I was going to lose it, it's, right? So it's one of the realest things ever. When you're climbing, you've got these emotions that you won't get there, and when you get there, it switches. I've had, you know, had Sebastian Maniscalco, who I know you know on my show, one of the funniest dudes on the planet, right? But best selling calling where he goes. Now I worry about losing it, yeah. And that's part of it. And that's yeah. just part of. But I think the journey part, guys. I would just add to what Jay's saying. For me, it's not what's happening to me; it's what's happening in me as I'm going through that journey, it's the moments, it's the memories, it's the, Hey man, eventually like I've made a difference here. I've contributed. And you say this with the vets. So he's got this MVP, which is getting the, the athletes with the vets. Right. And one of the things that there's this huge suicide rate, depression rate, there's a little thing you said in there. I just want to allow, have you elaborate on it. Cause I want to make sure I understood it where their identities were tied to being warriors right? And then when that's taken, this happens, as you know, with a lot of athletes, their identity is I'm a wide receiver for the Eagles, you take away in the NFL, they don't know who they are, you take away, they're not in combat anymore, they don't know who they are. And maybe it's even something that I'm, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a mother, and then your children leave because they've grown up. And now you no longer are a mother. And you've tied your identity to what you do, as opposed to who you are. And this yeah. is one of the things you work on with the vets. And I imagine you're doing that work with yourself, too. Yeah, I mean, here's the biggest thing is I'm trying to get them all to understand, especially like our vets, they're ingrained to not have individuality. Mm-hmm. Well, MVP is to get them through the transition. Mm-hmm. The only way you're going to get through the transition, the rest of us, everybody else lies on their resume. Veterans dumb theirs down. Like they don't want to brag about their stuff. I'm like, no, I need you. Like mm-hmm. I will hire someone in two seconds. If they're like, like I said, our guy Denver, they had a bridge that got blown up and they got Iraq by these suicide bombers. He pulled nine people out of this bridge wow. and it, it took him three years to tell us this. I'm like, dude, dude, are you kidding me? Like, we had another guy, Ellen Ruiz, helped save all these uh, American POWs, the first ever African American female POW, him and his crew, and he got injured. And he was like the first MVP I ever, ever helped. A lot of these vets, they are ingrained not to have individuality. And mm. like, I tell them all, they've done incredible things. They've had grace under fire and courage under pressure. And they've been loyal and, you know, taking care of their brothers and sisters in the right and left. And the uniform comes back and they come here and they're like, oh, I'm different. Mm. With their head down. Mm. And I want to switch that tone to, no, you're different. Different yes. is good. Yes. Different leads to success. As I said before, right? Mm. And our football players, our athletes, they always, man, their uniform comes off and they're like, oh, I used to play in the NFL. Or I used to fight or I used to be an Olympian. Oh, no. So- oh. You always will be that person. You are the, and that that's not who you are. Your uniform's not who you are. Mm-hmm. What's behind your rib cage? 
that got you to beat out millions and millions and millions yes. to play on that level, that's who you are. That suddenly doesn't let just leave when the uniform comes off. Oh, bro. Who reminds them of this? Bro, that's very good. That's so that's what we're reminding you at. And I want everybody to say, like, there's something that makes each one of us different. We got us, we got it in us. We've got to be proud of it and use it and walk in a room like I'm not like everybody else here. And every single person listening to home has something. They've got something. They've just got to realize what it is and not beat it back down enough. Mm-hmm. Like my vets don't like when I yeah. say, man, I, I need you to start bragging about your shit. Yeah. Because, oh, no, we, we, don't, we don't brag. It's, it's not bragging if it's true. That's right. And, right? And hey, Deion Sanders would never say, oh, I – Maybe I'll pick off that pass. <laughs> I'm thinking, right? Wouldn't say, uh, I might knock that guy out. Like, no, I'm knocking your ass out. I'm yep, picking that yep, pass yep. off. Yep. And our vets aren't ingrained to do that. It, yep. it gets them so uncomfortable. My job is to help them through, through ch- transition. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and a lot of times they get really uncomfortable and, and push back with how I say this stuff because it's, they've had all these years of, nope, you don't talk about it. You're just team, 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 team. Okay. Well, that team's not there for you. So we, now we need to build a new team for you and a team that could lift you up from the inside out bro i think that's true of all people i think it's a microcosm most people don't embrace their individuality they almost suppress their differences yeah. their different emotions their different thoughts brother i have to tell i'm gonna ask you one more question because we're pressed on time but like i just first i want to thank you for today because i know we've helped millions of people actually I may recommend that you've helped millions of people today and that. and um because of your courage and the example of what he's doing is what I want everybody to take from today. Obviously there's the tools and the resources and the thoughts and the strategies and all the stories you've heard, but it's also what he's embodying the service, the different things he's done, the vulnerability, the guts it takes to go, Hey, I'm struggling with this right now. You know, the 10 years of work to get there finally to break 10 grand in freaking income, all these things this man's done is just, it's remarkable. So the last question is a simple one. It's just like, I want to make sure we covered everything and we didn't lose, miss something. I'm someone listening to Jay Glazer right now. I'm like, hey, man, thank you. I'm following you now. I'm going to be doing my own mental health checkups. I'm probably going to start to share about whatever my thing is. Might not even be mental. It might be physical, emotional, whatever. Anywhere I'm struggling, I'm somewhere gray. I'm somewhere anxiety, depression, frustration, fear, right? Lack of self-confidence is a huge one for most people. And by the way, we all got fear. Right. right. Every one of us got fear. There's no shame in that. Yeah. Zero. So, so, so what would your message be? Here's just a place to start, man. Like you're there today. You listen to the show. Maybe the show made you feel a little bit better. Here's just one additional thing, sister or brother that you should think about or do. Well, it's two things. One, yes, definitely start talking to your people about this. Okay. It gets you closer together. I didn't start like, I didn't tell Strahan that I had a breakdown until two months ago. The first time I ever told him. Wow. He'd been my best friend for 30 years. And he actually said to me, and I told him how to get out of dinner. He goes, oh, do you uh, want me to come over? I'm like, nah. He said, you want me to talk about it? I said, nah. And he goes, why have you never told me about this? Yeah. I said, I don't make the rules of this thing, bro. It, it, man, for some reason with you, I felt ashamed. Mm. Maybe because he and I compete so much. I don't know. Mm. Then I went to the Super Bowl last year. I was really struggling. I went down because um, one of my other really close friends, Rondé Barber, we have a little mm-hmm. crew, mm-hmm. me, Rondé, Scott Brian, Ryan again, Ben mm-hmm. held fun. And I need to be around football, right? But mm-hmm. I want to go and I told them I'm struggling. I need to look up you guys. Like, what do you mean? Because they just see the laughy, jokey glaze all the time. Yeah. And I sat there with them and I told them. And it got us so much closer together. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. open up to and even people like, if you read the book, you'll see the way I describe my depression, anxiety, it, by trying to teach Sean McVay, the head coach of the Rams, mm. what living in the gray is like. He doesn't get it. He doesn't understand it to this level. He does now. And he allowed me to recreate the entire dinner that we had, me, him, and Andrew Whitworth, about what this darkness does. Wow. So the darkness can fuel us to do great things. Sure. Right. But we got to keep the monster in the box a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So there's ways to use it to motivate you Mm -hmm. to do great things. So call your people, tell them about it when you're struggling. Don't think it's ever too much because it's not Mm -hmm. because they want to help you. It allows them to be a service to you. And that's my other thing. Figure a way to be of service, whether it's you like dogs or you want to help the elderly or children or whatever. And there's a bunch of ideas in the books of what you could do, what I've done, what you could do. But being of service will then help you immensely. And that, that's real. 
not the other stuff. Mm -hmm. That's real, right? Not the filtered Instagram moments. Mm -hmm. That's real. Yeah. You're real, bro. This was a remarkable conversation. I knew we were going to have a good talk today, but I don't know that we were going all these places, man. Like, I love you, brother. I'm really, you know what I am? We're just getting to know each other pretty well. Like, I'm proud of you. I'm really proud of you. And I hope, I hope you're proud of you, man. Yeah, I'm getting there, man. I'm trying. Good. I'm I'm, I'm proud that that moment yesterday when I hear people like you say, man, you're going to like, again, being a service for me, it, where I got to get better is that a moment like this, it makes me feel good in the moment. Yeah. But I'm trying to build those moments where I have, where I'm not stuck in the pit down there of, yeah. of hopelessness i now am up on a my own platform so i'm, I'm trying to build these building blocks yeah shrink your oh. dispersion in between how many times it happens oh, and how exactly. deep it happens and uh by the way i uh i submit my name to be on your team so anything you ever need bro you got my number oh, you know bro. that and i'm here for you so yeah. right back at you man thank and, you and you've been on a lot of millions of people's a team today so jay glazer thank you guys go get unbreakable follow jay on social oh, all right you got it tell me how you got it where do you get it where do you want us to get it amazon anywhere they get a book on Barnes and Noble, Harper Collins, anywhere you, you want to buy it. where it is right here. Go get it, guys. Uh, He's holding it up for the YouTube watchers. And for everybody else, share today's show for Please. anyone you love and care about who's dealing with any of these issues so that we can spread the word and maybe they'll pick up the book as well. So God bless everybody. We're going to walk this walk together. We'll all walk it together. Max out, everyone. God bless you. Appreciate it, man. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around. If you'd like more, click the videos right here. They're exactly what you need to see next. And if you're new here, hit subscribe and become a part of the Max Out community. And tell me what you think about the videos in the comments below. I read all of them every week and I select winners that get all kinds of prizes, gear, coaching calls with me. Make a comment.